All right. So I'm going to trade right now. Um, this trade has a lot going on with it here. Uh, it's a three push pattern right here. Uh, so it's a wedge, right? So you got, let's start over. Let's just start from the beginning. I'm going to try to tell you why I did this trade here. Um, it's a three push pattern right here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. This was a channel. This is a channel. A little rising wedge on the, on the on hourly, but it's a rising wedge right here. So you would expect that to break down a high percentage of the time. Um, we're also in the top of the trading range and then you have another another channel or wedge that is uh, sloping down so you have this little intersection here where everything comes together and that's right here that's why you see all my lines here and you've got a lot of confluence here and what happens in the market when you have a lot of confluence you really increase your probability of the trade working out because when other groups or traders are seeing the same things, you know, they tend to make them happen. So I sold up here. I sold in this little cross section. You got dueling trend lines. You got one going up, sloping up, and you got one going down, sloping down. Um, and then you're in the, a trading range. So I would expect this to come back down here and try to take out this low one more time. Um, but I wanted to make a video about structuring binary decisions. Um, comment below if you want that video. But what that means is you always want to give yourself just two choices. Is it A or is it B? Okay, is it C or is it D? And if you think that way, you won't try to overthink it. So I gave myself two choices. <clears throat> this is breaking below a channel. It's retesting here and breaking below a channel. It's got another top possible top here but this could also be a trend line too right that could be a trend line right here okay but it's definitely not in a strong bull trend it's either in a trading range or it's in a channel I'm not even gonna say it's in a wedge it's either in a trading range or a channel and a channel is just a slope trading range so Definitely not the same momentum we saw with this push up and this push up. We're moving into a trading range. So if we come about the top of this range, uh, I think we've got the strength to get above this trend line. I actually think we would spike above that trend line and come back down. Um, but I feel like we're going to test the bottom of the range. They keep trying. Bears are making money buying the lows. The only time a bear has made money in this range is buying the low because every time uh, every time he bought a high, he lost money. So he bought a low here or bought the midpoint of this candle. He made money. He bought the high up here. He lost money. He bought the low here. He made money. He bought the high. He lost money. He bought the low of this candle. He made money. Then he made a little more money. Then when he bought the high, he lost money. He bought the low of this candle, made money. So this pattern has been pushing down on this price action. And with all of this, uh, we may have enough strength to get back above here and tag this and come back down. But I'm putting my stop down here because the longer this wants to stay under this blue line, the higher probability that we're going to test the low of this range. So let's let it play out. Let's see what happens. Um, I do want to scale into this over here. But you just want to give yourself two choices when you trade. Two choices so that you don't overthink it. Is it doing this or is it doing that? Um, and it's doing one of them. Is it trading? Is it ranging? It's ranging. Is it is it ranging wildly? Is there enough up and down for both sides to make money or is it ranging you know, tight where you got to be a computer to make money? You know, is it trending? Is it trending? tight is it a tight trend you should probably only bet in the direction of the trend is it late in the trend and bears are starting to have larger pullbacks and people are taking more profits 
and the trend's kind of dying out. Well, now maybe you can try to short it, you know, um, try to make money counter trend. But yeah, binary decisions. I'm trying to do that more and more lately as I trade. And um, this is just an example of that. But a lot of confluence in this area. Uh, I'll actually be surprised if it comes up here. But I think that would be such a thing to do that it would waste a lot of energy and it would have to come back to the low of the range or the middle of the range and I could get out at a, at a profit with my score here in the middle. So let's see what happens. Up about 200 on the day so far. I've been trading all night. Haven't been to bed yet, so I might sleep in tomorrow and trade after lunch. This here kind of looks like a broadening wedge from here to here. Turn off this damn magic wand. And from here to here, it's kind of like a broadening wedge there. Maybe we see the top of this. Maybe we just drop and do it now. The way I'm looking at it, this is a range here, but this is also a bigger part of the range. I feel like the range extends like right here. There's a small little channel there too. Or maybe it's just this. I call this the range. Yeah, look how they rejected it the first time. Then they bumped up through it, came up support where they rejected the previous time pushed all the way up to form the top of the range testing it to see how high they could go and then built back up to it tested it properly with actual orders up against it not just catching them off guard and now they're coming back and every bear that has made money has sold above the bar because if you sell below the bar you're not making money. An example right here. If you sold um, above this bar, and here you sold this bar down, you made money. If you sold below this bar, you did not make money. Okay? Same thing with this right here. If you sold below this bar, you didn't make money. But if you sold above this bar or near the high of this bar, you made money. Same thing here. You sold the high of this bar, you made money. You sold below here, you didn't make any money. Okay? You sold the high of here, you made money. You sold the high of here, you made money. You sold the low, you not you have not made money yet. So I'm kind of in the midpoint of this candle. I'm, I'm hoping it'll hold. Um, but on the highs is where the people that are make doing the <coughs> are doing the um things to do to make money so I'm more comfortable selling above the highs than I am selling the stop I just like for this to go in profit if it's gonna do it and if it's gonna double my position and do all that then we'll manage it differently when it gets up there It's out that low of that last candle. It'll be the first time since back here selling the low of the candle has made money. So let's see what it does here. If it takes out the low of that candle, I think it's going to come below here to the bottom of this range. Down here, baby, that's where liquidity is. Come on down here.
So like binary decision here, is this a breakout or a pullback? Is it more of a breakout or is it more of a pullback? To me, it looks like more of a, <clears throat> a breakout than a pull. It looks like it's a breakout to start a new trend. And then a pullback in an existing trend because we've already pulled back a bunch of times. Pull back here, bought up, pull back here, bought up, pull back here, bought up. Then we pull back here and they couldn't buy it up as high. Then they sold all the way down here and then they bought it back up here. And now they're selling down here toward the lows again. So this looks like this could be maybe a minor trend reversal. Maybe it'll stop above one of these lows or we'll just keep ranging until something happens. But um, I think it'll at least visit the bottom of this range and we can get a nice scalp out on that. If it takes out that low, it's a good sign. Flirting with that low. Now that was actually higher than the previous low. But I think it's going to bump through here. I think they're trapping some bears or some bulls here. All the bulls have just bought that up. I think they're going to be trapped. We trade below that low now. And every bull that bought that is trapped. And they're going to get out. It's going to push us right down <coughs> below that candle. Lines off the chart here. Where is the eraser? Why isn't it a favorite? So the longer it stays inside of here, and this is looking more like a channel now, I'm going to include this as an overshoot, came back down, retested it, and it's falling some more. Um, the more this gets out of here though, the more I want to kind of move my stop down a little bit. Or move my take profit in. Let's see what we get out of this. Now the projection is down here, which is about three points past my profit take. And if it gets here, it'll be here, and that'll be half the distance to my profit take. So let's see if they get down here real quick. <laughs> this big bar here. Yep, measured move will get us there too. 
So the same way we had, I think we had confluence with these dueling trend lines and everything I said in the beginning, I think there's a lot of confluence with, um, oh, it's getting ready to come on through here. Uh, I think there's a lot of confluence with um, profit targets, like measured moves and trend lines and, and um, you know, retracement levels. And that's why, in my opinion, Fibonacci works sometimes. But I think we're going to get down here to the bottom of this channel. I think the, the market sees this channel. Um, we do still have a trading range here, though. And forget that. And I'm at the low of the trading range now. So I'm expecting it to come on through the trading range. So... I hope you see how a lot of patterns can be playing out at the same time. You just had a triangle break to the downside. Looks like it retested, broke down, retested. You're in a channel right here, and you're also in a trading range. And all of these can be working the way they're known to work, behave. Oh, and you're in a broadening wedge. Now, all of them can be behaving like you need them to behave at the same time. And you don't need to see all of them. You just need to see one of them or two of them. Okay, we just broke that low, so I think we're coming down here for sure. I think we're going to come for this low now. If not the end of this candle, the next one. I think we're going to come on down here. They're aware of this channel. The market is aware of this channel. They're using it. Um, we do expect it to break up. And we do expect it to break up because it's downward sloping, so we expect it to break up. But if we're counting pushes right now, this looks like one leg, pull back, two leg. So measured move would take us down to here. From this first leg here, measured move would take us down to here. And it's the bottom of the channel, which they're going to be trying to reach because they're aware of this channel now. This could be the bottom of the channel also. This could be the bottom of a wedge. Oh, we got three pushes here. And yeah, this could be the bottom of a wedge right here. It could be what we're seeing here. Let's switch wedges more powerful. Taking their time getting down here. Binary decision. Is this a trend bar or is it a trading range bar? Looks more like a trend bar. Trade it down, trade it up a little bit, but close near its low. Same one here. This is a kind of a trading range bar, but also a trend bar. More a trend bar than a trading range bar. So if it's a trend bar, Bet with the trend. Like we just said, I think this is a new breakout to a new low here. I don't see any of this mattering right now. Unless they're trying to retest the back of this again. Maybe test it a little higher. And they would also be testing the top of the range if they did that. If they test this here, I'm going to have to sell again here. 
because I think we're going to fall to the bottom if we don't break out of the top. So now this channel line is so far out. I don't think the market is going to try to reach this. I think they might try to reach up here, though, before testing the low. Let's put an order up there. How many spots is that away? Let's do at least 10 spots away. So let's go to 61. That is 60. We're at 80, right? There. That's the current price. 52.75. Let's go to 62.75. Okay, and so they tried, and the breakout above this bar has failed. We just talked about that. The only way bears have made money today selling above bars. And they just sold above this bar. They sold at the top of the channel, which was also the bottom of this um, let's see if they have enough to break through here rejection on the 15 minute two and they're losing one of my moving averages <laughs> See another little pattern here. This could just be overshoots. And this could be the bottom of the wave. So this could be the bottom, this could be the bottom. It could be this whole general area because this is a range. But a lot of things should draw this here. If it came right here, it would break out of this, it would test this and this and the bottom of the range. So lots of targets for people to try to shoot for. <coughs> And they will be willing to sell higher like I am right now. Money is now down there also, and this 15 minute hasn't returned to its 20 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 bars, it hasn't returned to the 20. So you're talking what? How many hours is that? Almost four hours away from the 20 period. So it's returning to it also, and it's right below my order.
This could be the trend line it's returning to also. There's so much that it could be doing, but trend lines help you immensely when trying to forecast things. I think it's aware of that blue line it's bouncing off of. So are enough computers aware of it that they'll take profit at it? Then we'll keep selling down to the bigger pattern and the lower the range. I think the lower the range, though, I think the range is pretty defined right now. And I think it knows that top blue line is a channel. So I think we'll get to the bottom of the channel and the bottom of the range. It's aware of that line there. Low, didn't it? Looks like it did. This low was 8,046, and this low was 8,045.75. So this broke this low by a tick. One tick trap there. And the bears have not bought it back, bought it back their losses here. People sold the low of that tick right there. And they're trapped right now. So, probably going to sell more higher. Try to get out of break even. So, we shouldn't really get above that. Shouldn't really get above this green line right here. Yeah, the market's aware of this line for sure. Look how many times it's bounced at it. One, two, three. Count that as four and five, or just four, five, six times. Six times it's ran into this, and it's aware of this channel. And we said that this breaks to the upside most of the time. This downward sloping, this blue. Is this a breakout or a pullback? It's a breakout. Should probably close my long. If it's a pullback, uh, and I think this channel is channel in this trading range of the two big ones that we're playing right now. I think we're going to go lower. 
I do think this is a breakout, but I think we just might go test the top of the range and come back down here. Putting that hammer down now. Last 30 seconds of this candle here. Bears have been selling the tops of bars pretty aggressively. We're at the back of the top of the channel. We're in the middle of the range. Bears need to really assert themselves here and come back and drive this price back below center of the range into the bottom. See the top of that bar, they're attacking the top of that bar. You should be able to take this whole candle out now. Come on, bears. Take that candle out. Come on, bears. Come on, bears. Come on, bears. Take that candle out. Take it out. Them bulls buying above bars. They ain't got it like that. They ain't got it like that. Come on, bears. Push below that low. Push below that low. Buy up a little bit. Let's trap them. Let's trap them. Let's let them buy and let's trap them. Let's take it out. Let's take out that low. Let's monitor this low right here. This low right here. We don't monitor this low right here. Hmm. We're going to set an alert on that low. We want to know when that low is broken. Break that low. Break that low. Come on down here. Break that low.
or give up bar. Come on, break that low. Man, they keep backing off of that low. Come on, you got the momentum now. If the Bears don't take this signal here, I might have to get out early, you know? This is a nice signal setting up, and they look like they want to let it be bought back up, but no bear has made money selling the low, so I understand their troubles. I do. I don't want to sell here either, even though I think it's going to hit my profit. I want to sell the highs. I want to sell the highest highs. I don't want to sell for momentum. So if we had more momentum, we'd be in a bear trend and we're really just in a trading range, a broad trading range. But I wish they quit playing with this low here. All right. Looks like they can push this down at the end of the candle. <clears throat> the very end will come through. Break that low. Give me that alert. The bulls should be giving up here soon. I mean, this should be a pretty violent break here. And we broke that trend line. It looks like we stopped at the low that we made right here. And we said the market was aware of this line right here. Right here, six touches. Back to that, but we want this low to break right here. And that's the one we want to see broke. <clears throat> okay, we just broke that one. Come on down, test the bottom of this channel. Come on down. Okay, so we're breaking through this. Remember I said if we broke the bottom of this, this could be a false break or a test of this, but it, it tested seven, six times. I mean, it's got it. Give way sometime. We're getting to the bottom of this range. I'm back to the 20 here. Probably get a little bit below the 20. Maybe to this channel line. Once again, you got dueling channel lines on this side of it. The same way on the way up. It is. Come on down. It's getting awfully close. So right now my risk is its highest because I'm risking all 50 of this to get the next little two points. I'm upside down in my risk right now. So I have to have really high conviction that I'm going to get these points. Otherwise, I need to be closing the trade now because I'm risking a lot of money just to get two extra points. Does that make sense? So I do think it's going to come down here though, so I'm going to leave it. But 
your risk reward changes in the trade from the time you put it on to when you actually hit your profit target. You start out um, risking the most. If I were to leave my stop all the way you know, up here, wherever I'm going to put it, I'm risking all that plus my profit to get a couple of ticks more. But I think it's going to get there. Most of the time, though, uh, I've heard it called, don't be a, a uh, be PG, don't be a nit for a tick. You know, don't be such an a-hole that you only get out at the exact price that you want. Because you might have something happen like this. I didn't give up $18 trying to win two. or trying to win six. But I think we're coming down here on this bar. We're going to spike on the next. So I'm going to stay in this. I was thinking I'm actually lowering my stop. We're bringing it, you know, my profit target. Let's put this low in here like that. See when we can break that one. Binary decisions, is this a pullback or a breakout? Looks like a breakout to me. It's like a breakout on almost every chart. And this is below that hourly low, that last hourly low. I think I'm in the perfect place. I think everything's pulling it this direction. But I'm only a point and a half away. So that's less than $5 that I'm going to get more than the price you see right now. So do I risk 53 for 5 Or do I start to scale out every time it hits another low? Come on, baby. If this was a stop loss, I wouldn't be saying that. I'd be like, no. But it's a take profit, so... Come on, baby. Got to trade through my price to fill me. And there we go. Came right to the bottom of the range. All right, guys. That took a little bit, but um, I hope you learned a lot. Trend lines, you know, are my forte. And then you combine that with how Brooks price action is on the standard of the market. Whoo, you're going to be killer. All right. Give me a like. See you in the next one. Peace.